Hello, I am Annabelle Sipley, and I'm going to read to you one of my favorite stories. It's my favorite partly because it is true, and it's a story that's happened again and again, and it brings warmth to my heart. This is called My Shinkatig Pony by Susan Jeffers. This story takes place on an island in Virginia. It's called Shinkatig Island, and it involves this very long, skinny island called Assateeg. Long ago, there was a ship carrying horses from Spain, and that ship was shipwrecked, and the horses spilled out into the sea, and they swam themselves to this island. This is the author's note, and I will read it at the end. It's very important to this whole story. Julie loved ponies. Her room was filled with them. She read Misty of Shinkatig over and over. On the dairy farm where she lived, there were cows and chickens, but no ponies. Sometimes she would visit her friend Sharon's horse, Shanty. She loved his soft muzzle and the way he breathed on her hand. He was gentle and took her wherever she asked him to go. But she longed for a pony of her own. Julie knew that every, every July there was a pony auction on Shinkatig Island in Virginia. After months of trying, she finally convinced her parents that she could earn enough money to buy one of the famous ponies. Maybe there would be one that no one else wanted, or one that didn't cost too much. Julie raked leaves, fed the chickens, and babysat her cousins. She cleared out the tool shed and put straw down for a soft bed. It was the perfect home for a new pony. At last, it was July, while Dad stayed home to take care of the farm. Julie and her mother drove to Shinkatig. As they crossed the bridge to Shinkatig, they could see nearby Assateague Island, where the ponies run free. Julie knew the legend of the ponies. Many, many years ago, a Spanish galleon was said to have been shipwrecked off Assateague Island. It spilled its cargo of ponies into the sea. The ponies swam ashore and survived on the island. The ponies learned to live on Assateague. Through all the seasons, they grew strong and beautiful, and new babies were born every year. But soon there were too many ponies and not enough food for them all. So every summer, the fire department of Shinkatig Island holds a roundup of the pony herd on Assateague. The fire department volunteers, known as the Saltwater Cowboys, swim some of the ponies across a narrow channel from Assateague to Shinkatig. Then the cowboys carefully guide the ponies to the fairgrounds in town. The evening before the auction, Julie and her mother went to the pens at the fairgrounds and looked at all the ponies. Julie felt if her, as if her heart would burst. The ponies were all so beautiful. A black and white filly came over and looked at Julie. If you were mine, whispered Julie, I would call you Dream, Painted Dream. The next morning, Julie was so excited, too excited to eat. She and her mom headed straight for the auction. Julie soon realized that she did not have enough money. She kept raising her hand to make a bid, but every time the price climbed too high. Julie's eyes filled with tears as one pony after another was sold, even the black and white filly. Don't give up, said a woman sitting next to her. Keep calling out your bid. Persistence pays off, and she handed Julie a $20 bill. Thank you, 
but we really can't, Julie's mother began. But then a little boy gave Julie a dollar. Looks like everyone wants you to have a pony of your own, her mother said, smiling. Thank you, Julie exclaimed as more strangers passed her money. Her heart leaped. Now she might have enough to buy a pony. But it was too late. All the ponies had been sold. As the last ponies were being taken out of the auction arena, a man shouted, Wait! A pony has been returned. The barn where she was going won't take a foal. Don't leave, folks, the auctioneer said. We have one more pony to sell. It was the black and white pony, Painted Dream. The auctioneer looked straight at Julie. Her heart pounded and her hand shot in the air. Going once, going twice, sold to the little girl in the first row. Well, said her mother, what are you going to do now that you have your own dream? I have a lot of work to do, said Julie. First, I have to gentle my pony. Then I'm going to do chores and save all my money and come back next year. Isn't one pony enough? Her mother asked, laughing. No, said Julie. I'm going to give my money to a girl so that she can buy a pony of her own. And that is just what she did. And now I'm going to read to you the very beginning, the author's note. It says, this is a true story. Actually, it is several true stories. Some years ago, my sister Judy and I attended an auction of ponies at Pony Pinning Day on Sheikatigue Island. We were touched when a foal bought at an auction was returned and then resold to a little girl with red hair. We watched as strangers in the audience passed singles, tens, and twenties to the amazed and grateful child, making her dream come true. I was enchanted by this event, which seems to repeat itself every year. I have looked in local newspapers for stories about similar acts of generosity and have found at least one every summer. I was particularly impressed by the story of one young lady who had been the beneficiary of kindness from the people around her. After taking her pony home, she spent the next year working and saving her money. She returned to an auction the following summer with her savings in order to help another child buy a pony. That brought tears to my eyes. I fell in love with the story of the Shinkatigue ponies when I was seven years old. That Christmas, my father brought home a signed copy of Marguerite Henry's Misty of Shinkatigue. He had probably stood on line at Macy's for, lo for hours waiting for the author to sign his copy. From time to time, I still run my fingers over her signature to connect with that extraordinary writer who brought hours of joy to so many children, and especially me. I also love the drawings and paintings of Wesley Dennis, the little black and white de depictions of the people and the ponies and the landscapes make me feel as if I might be there on that island, smelling the pine trees and dumping sand out of my shoes. Years later, I sent signed copies of two of my books to Marguerite Henry to thank her for inspiring me. You can see her gracious response here. This was written by Susan Jeffers, and this is from Marguerite Henry. If you are a horse lover, Marguerite Henry books are amazing, and I hope that you can fall in love with them.